You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Sunday evening, the news broke about uh, Harold Perkins. Monday, Brian Kelly, right out the shoot, confirmed uh, what was feared Saturday after the game. Harold Perkins uh, will be lost for the season with a significant knee injury. We're not certain about the specifics relative to time and place for surgery, but it looks to be, you know, an ACL injury and um, certainly an injury that, um, you know, we feel terrible about, especially for Harold and, you know, the work that he's done to put himself in a great position. Got a lot of thoughts on this. We'll react to it in about an hour from right now, but that's confirmed, and uh, it's, it, it's devastating for Harold Perkins. It's devastating for the LSU defense, which has now lost two of its most veteran and, and best contributors in Jacoby and Guillory and now Harold Perkins. Again, I'll get a full thought on that uh, at the start of hour number two, so about one hour from right now. But uh, confirmed by Brian Kelly, Harold Perkins, done for the year, torn ACL. Uh the game Saturday with LSU and UCLA was really the tale of two halves. Uh, it, it was two very different stories. If you were watching the first half, that is a, an illustration of why this team will not reach the lofty preseason expectations that many people had for it, in particular being a playoff team. But then, if you watch the second half, that was an illustration of why they can. Not saying they will, not saying why they will, or could, why they can. Y'all, the first half was all kinds of bad. On a third and four, you allowed a 28-yard completion. You allowed them to convert a fourth and two with a 13-yard completion. You had a coverage bust where you didn't bother to cover the tight end on a touchdown reception. Will Campbell had another false start. Kyron Lacey dropped a pass over the middle. You got stuffed on fourth down. Uh, fourth and seven, by the way. More on that here in just a quick second. They had a third and 28. You allowed a 28-yard reception. Emory Jones got hurt. Zy Alexander got hurt. Harold Perkins on that last drive before the end of the first half where they scored to tie it, missed a tackle. Um... Uh, Jordan Gilbert got hurt. You had a holding on J.K. Johnson in the end zone. It was all kinds of bad all the way around in the first half. And you're playing a miserable football team on your home field and you're tied at half. And we could sit here and say, hey, maybe UCLA wasn't that bad. No. UCLA's a bad football team. But in the first half, LSU matched them as a bad football team. That is the, the very real truth. But then, you go out in the second half, <laughs> and you allow 89 yards. I just say this again slowly, so that I don't look right into the camera for those who are watching. So you look into my eyes and you see this, okay? In an entire half of football, the LSU Fighting Tiger defense against a power four opponent from the Big Ten allowed. 89 yards of offense. Y'all, that's hard to do against air. They pitched a shutout in the second half. They looked awesome in the second half. Now, can you find a way to do that for four quarters, please? Especially against a bad football team. Um, A few observations from the game. So LSU won the toss and deferred again. Uh, uh, this is going to be something that Brian Kelly is... The, Brian Kelly, I at this point think, is just trolling me. He's trying to piss me off. I've convinced myself of this. It's nobody else. It's just me. Like all the little funny quips and quirks he has in his press conference. Like I think this is what he's doing to me. And by the way, yeah, you took the ball to start the game. So you can go start fast and you did. You scored. You know what happened? Your defense gave up a tying touchdown. And then you know what happened in the end of the first half? UCLA had the ball. They scored, tied it, and then they got the ball to start the second half, which is exactly why you typically defer. I don't know how many more times that dude's got to learn that lesson. It's just what it is. Uh, I hated the fourth down decision. 
You score, they score. It's 7-7. Got the ball at midfield. At, at actually the UCLA 44-yard line, you go for it on fourth and seven. If it's fourth and an inch, I could live with it. Fourth and seven, your probability is very low. There's a difference between being aggressive and being reckless. And you're playing a bad offensive football team. Like, we, we know that about UCLA. That is a bad offensive football team that has struggled through two games, and you gave them the ball at midfield. And they ended up yielding a field goal. They yielded points there. Why would you give a bad offensive football team half a field? Makes no sense. I'm going to tell you one more thing about the flow of this game, which is going to go largely unnoticed. They got the ball to start the second half in a tie game. You forced a punt. You went down and scored. So you're up 20, uh, 24-17. They got the ball. Bing, bang, boom. They're right down to the 16-yard line. You remember this? Probably don't the second half as it went through. They're at, they're at your 16 and got called for a chop block. The next play was the one where they went backwards 23 yards, and they ended up having to punt. Downed you at the 8. You went 11 plays, 92 yards to go up 31-17. That's where Caden Durham finished it off with a 35-yard catch and run, which was awesome. But the point is, but for that chop block, but for that chop block, they're first and 10 at your 16 in a seven-point ball game. Self-inflicted wound, they went backwards, and LSU took control from there. <sighs> there was good, y'all. Garrett Nussmeyer continues to be awesome. Uh, 32 of 44, 352, and three touchdowns. Uh, he's second in the country in passing touchdowns. He's one of the tops in completion percentage at 73%. Uh, quarterback rating, efficiency rating, he has been awesome. Garrett Nussmeyer has been everything anyone could have possibly imagined. Uh, and if, if you are someone who is complaining about Nussmeyer or this offense, you need to just take a hike to Egypt and never come back because he has been on a team that has struggled at times to run the football, that is missing its deep threat, that defensively at times has been a hodgepodge and a hot mess. He has been awesome for a guy starting for the first time in his career. Love the way they spread the ball around. Nine different players caught a pass. By the way, what did Brian Kelly talk about last week on third down they wanted to improve on? Specifically, the thing they wanted to improve on on third down. Third and short, remember? Thir specifically, third and one to third and three. He specifically mentioned that last week. You had three such opportunities on Saturday, you converted all three. And on one third and one, you got really creative. You faked the dive to Josh Williams, you threw the ball to Mason Taylor for an eight-yard completion. Credit where it's due. You're going to criticize when warranted, you got to give credit where it's due. They wanted to work on that this week. They did. And how about the Josh Williams drive at the start of the second half? The big 14-play, 96-yard touchdown drive where Josh Williams carried it seven times, including four times in the red zone and got you in the end zone. You wanted to run the football even against a stack box. You did it on Saturday. Credit where it's due. And defensively, you're creating havoc. You may not be very good defensively, but you're very good at creating havoc. Five sacks, five TFLs, an interception, five quarterback hits, a forced fumble. Actually, almost two forced fumbles because Greg Penn ripped the ball out right before halftime. That review went. I mean, dude's knee was on the ground by, by a blade of grass. Or you, or you would have had two. How about Braden Swinson? Y'all want to be on, on record watch? Braden Swinson's got seven sacks. The LSU single season record, Arden Key set that back in 2016 with 12. Through four games, a third of the way through the season, Swinson's got seven. He's on pace for 21 sacks. I don't think he's going to get there, but he's he's been incredible. Um, There was good in this game, but there was bad as well. And if you want reason to believe they might be able to get through it defensively, again, I'm not saying they will. Brian Kelly talked about it. He opened up his post-game press conference. This wasn't a question. This is what he wanted to convey as he opened up his post-game press conference. All of their points in the in the first half were just mistakes that are all correctable mistakes, and we corrected them in the second half and played you know really well in the second half. All of them were mistakes. All the points they scored in the first half were mistakes. You corrected them in the second half. He was asked, "What did you change? What did you change at halftime?" They didn't make any changes. They executed the defenses that were called and. Execution is attention to detail, doing your job, D-Y-J, do your job, and we need to do our job. Do your job. Didn't make any changes at halftime. Just they executed the defense call. And this, one of the last questions he was asked, he punctuated his answer with this. 
continuing to develop our football team so we do the little things the right way. There's enough talent out here to contend for an SEC championship. We got to clean up the little mistakes. There's enough talent to contend for an SEC championship. We have to clean up the little mistakes. I don't know if I believe him, but it doesn't matter if I believe him. It matters if he, his staff, and his players think that. But a big part of that is going to be getting your young talent ramped up and ready to go for October because the meat grinder of the SEC is coming. And if you can start to play more consistently for four quarters like you did in the second half, then maybe, just maybe, you could surprise a team or two in the back half of your schedule. But if what we continue to see is this Jekyll and Hyde act where in the first half you're in a dogfight against a terrible UCLA team before suffocating them, choking them out in the second half, you're not going to be able to do that against good teams like Ole Miss, like Alabama, like Oklahoma, with games like that still ahead. Can you develop consistently? That's on Brian Kelly and the staff to get there. See if they can do it. 34-17, Tigers win. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.